Hi everyone. How's everyone doing this morning? This is not the right kind of enthusiasm from a bunch of people who've just joined NDIM 15 days ago. Assume this is the freshers party. How's everyone doing this morning? Awesome. That's really nice to hear and I don't blame you. It's 10 o'clock in the morning and I think a lot of us are still waking up. So, coffee is around in case anyone wants to grab some coffee. Um you heard my introduction and I think what I want to focus on is the um, stuff which I wish someone had told me when I was on your side of the fence. And um I think all of us as we start to study there's a lot of focus on building our IQ. There's a lot of focus on building skills and the technical know-how. But if you go to the workplace sometimes the competencies that are required to be successful are slightly different than the ones that we learn uh, during our academic years. So I'm going to focus on sharing a little bit of my experience um and experience that I've had with students like you coming into the corporate world and what really helps them be successful uh, in the corporate world. I have a bunch of slides but uh, please this conversation is so much more meaningful then the powerpoint slides so please feel free to stop me pause ask questions if you have a different opinion please bring it on because with different opinions our own head gets clearer right so you know let's make sure that we are surfacing whatever questions we have as we go along the one hour that we have together we all live in a vuka world does anyone know what vuka means in this room okay VUCA is actually a military acronym. It was actually started out in the Afghan war where there was just so much of volatility on the ground and the American forces had complete uncertainty about what will hit them next. There was also a lot of complexity because it was very hard to say whether on the ground a particular person that the forces come across is actually an ally or is someone who might just be an enemy. and there was a lot of ambiguity because there were so many different forces at play in afghanistan there was the russian connection there was also of course the taliban there are also in afghanistan those of us who read a little bit of the history know that there is feudal lords and there's just a lot of undercurrents of politics and tension which goes on between them how am i connecting the dots between the afghan war and the business world today can anyone take a guess wonderful thank you can we have a chocolate sahil for the lady the brave one to you know to be the first one to respond so the point that you made sorry what's your name steffi simon so just for the benefit of everybody in the back of the room the point that steffi made is there is just a lot of confusion in the business world just as there was on uh, ground in afghanistan what else there are more chocolates out here by the way so two answers can you guys if you don't mind just raise your hand and stand up just so that the whole room can hear you dynamic situations yes that's a good one and there was another one someone okay same thing so then i guess the two of you get <laughs> a chocolate each as well so sahil if you could pass it on that would be wonderful thank you so all of us as you step into the business world and some of us in the room may have worked before you will see that there are situations which are predictable you will see that there are situations like navigating through a sea with the benefit of a compass or with the benefit of the stars to guide you which are relatively easy to navigate through but what's interesting in today's world is that there are digital tsunamis that hit each one of us you look at uber which has completely revolutionized the way that we look at transport a lot of us in the room probably by the time we start working we'll really debate in our head whether we should you know invest money in buying a car or whether we should just operate with the help of a uber are there people like that in the room is there are people thinking on those lines exactly it saves you the hassle of parking it's convenient it's probably cheaper than maintaining a car as well uber is a wave that no one saw coming right and similar to uber there have been so many disruptions in the indian market patanjali 10 years ago or even 5 years ago could any one of us 
have imagined a baba who shows up on a religious channel will end up owning the biggest fmcg in this country the fastest growing fmcg in this country can anyone of us would have imagined that something like this could happen that's a disruption that came out of nowhere and that's what i mean when i say we live in a vuca world it's volatile it's uncertain it's complex and it is highly ambiguous and what that means for all of us as professionals is the skills that are required to be successful in today's world are very very different than the skills that were required to be successful in yesterday's world which was more predictable all right just a quick pause for all of us to reflect on all of us in the room and i mean every one of you including the people at the back who are you know somewhat listening and somewhat sleepy um the intention of this is to really pause and think about one individual in your life who has either been a great teacher for you it could be your sister your mother it could be anyone else or if you've worked in the past the best manager that you've had in the past raise your hand if you've thought of someone hopefully keep thinking for the rest of us who get to think of the one person who really inspired you okay let's just keep our hands raised if we've got one person in our mind just keep your hands raised i want to see all the room all the hands in this room go up hopefully everyone would have a chance to kind of think through who the one person who has really inspired you okay you can see about 70% of the room all right all right we'll pause with that now for all of you who had their hands raised can you think about what made that individual inspirational to you what were her or his biggest strengths yeah raise your hand if you've got those strengths in your head these could be anything these could be strengths that you saw them show at the workplace or these could be strengths that you qualities that you saw them show at home in case it's a family member yeah think harder for the group that had raised their hand for the first question but is still thinking through the second one good i'm going to just ask five people out of the group of people who had their hands raised to share who was that individual who they thought of in the first question and what was the quality or what is the strength that came to their mind for the second question so any five please go ahead Thing to enjoy, you can enjoy with it. So that's how I got enjoyed. Wonderful. And uh, what were the qualities that he showed or strengths? Yeah, uh, what he do uh, does different than others. He uh, he he spectrum of it. Like he he actually for the time he just put the ball and he take this is what. So that's what he did differently than the other. What was his strength? What was his quality? Uh, I find this. so his ability to probably step into your shoes and help you understand a concept from a practical angle was a quality that you appreciated if i can paraphrase your thoughts yeah is that right yeah. thank you thank you so much for sharing and there was a lady right behind you who wanted to share as well yes please go ahead um also i'm very thankful to the guys and we did the corporate trainer and a mba coach so i met him when i was doing my engineering there so he came to our college as a mentor for uh, training students for the dd and ti he has amazing personality as a person uh, with whom i have met till till now the best quality or the best strength he has is he takes a open attitude and knows the doubts which students have in their heart but they are not able to speak very politely and then fails in the college that so when you are sitting in a group of like 20 people and you are unable to express yourself mm. he is the one who will take out all the miseries inside from you and will solve them without uh, making you feel uncomfortable that is the best part 
that's wonderful i love that example about how someone is able to anticipate unspoken yes. words yes and uh, look at solving for those in a very comfortable and a safe environment so that's that's really wonderful thank you thank you so much for sharing thank could you. we have a bunch of chocolates for the two individuals who shared um my request is if we can have a couple of more people share and preferably from that side of the house that will be wonderful if you could just as you share uh, for the benefit of everybody first start out with your name and then get to your story would that be okay cool could we just go to the two hands that were propped up over there morning ma'am my name is lakshya tambi uh, my best teacher is my music teacher his name is uh, sir ankur ankur naidu uh, the best qualities which i like about him is his hard working nature and his positive Uh, he has built that hard work and that positivity for positivity and i also i am also that that hard work that's impressive so clearly your teacher although he was teaching music his lessons went way beyond the surendra tal that he was teaching you right it's just impacting you as a as a person and he was role modeling hard work and you actually imbibe that as a person so that's a that's a quality that you really like so that's great uh, thank you for sharing and i know there was another person who wanted to share my inspiration is my director sir somebody who is a very good person he was a very good person he will always take the stand uh, in ask him anything he will say anything he can ask him what is a god party and he will try to go on a date with a partner he's such a clear person from his mind he couldn't just and that's wonderful and i can connect the dots between what you said and what your uh, colleague here earlier said in terms of someone who's being approachable and who creates that safe space for people to come up and ask things which are on their mind but they're scared to ask to other people so that's wonderful in a very appropriate thank you thank you so much for sharing i think one last share over here and then we can probably proceed okay couple of last shares i know there were two of you who wanted to share so Hello, my name is Rahul. I have two mentors in my life, and I have never met them. So I actually met them through the book they have written. I read a lot of books. So one of them is Simon Sinek, and he wrote the book uh, Start with Why. So there was a part, there was a time in my life when I didn't knew what I was doing and why I was doing it. I knew what I was doing and how I was doing, but I didn't knew the why. So after reading that book, I kind of got self-aware and I started doing everything with a purpose. Like if I am here, I have a purpose to achieve, and why I am doing this, why I am doing MBA, not not just to get job, because I think money is a byproduct. It will come to you anyhow. Should you should actually do something that adds purpose to your life. So he is my mentor, and I follow him uh, like uh, all the way in the social media and everywhere, whatever he is trying to deliver the speeches everywhere. And one more, his name is Gary Vaynerchuk, and he is a uh, owner of Vayner Media. Uh, that uh, provide digital marketing agency uh, services to Fortune 500 companies. Okay, so uh, what I got from him was like it was kind of connected only from the other guy. It was about being self-aware. Like I was beating myself up for my weaknesses, but I was not actually appreciating what my strengths were. So he gave me that quality uh, that uh, after I listened to his story and like how he grown up from being in. Like uh, from a very poor class family to a very like a, right right now he's in the millionaire list of Forbes. The way he worked on his strengths. So his quality was not to give a lot of uh, table to your weaknesses, but like go all tips on your strengths. Mm. So that's how I figured out my life. And those two are my mentors. I hope I meet them someday. But right now that's it. Thank that's you. wonderful. Thanks for sharing, and I loved uh, what you said about. being yeah thank you by by all means please do applaud because i think it's a really good learning that you've shared i think one is clearly teachers can be from anywhere one can learn across the world one can learn from social media and i loved what you said about being self aware because i think both of these teachers the common thread on what you shared was essentially they got you to think and they got you to think deeply and become self aware and then act from that place rather than 
you know just pick up a skill and uh, move from there on so that's that's wonderful uh, one final share i know the gentleman at the very corner wanted to share i hope we're keeping the chocolates coming right for all the folks who are sharing Wonderful. So, what was her quality, which uh, you consider as a strength, Mohit? What was her strength? So, essentially, she understood who she was working with, and she paid attention to the areas that they needed focus on, and they, she helped them. So, she worked with them. rather than you know just writing them off that's a really good um, insight and we'll talk about growth mindset so remember that term and we'll loop back to exactly what you said as well cool thank you thank you so much for sharing everybody um can we come back to you i know you probably want to share as well we'll have adequate opportunity for us to talk are you okay with that cool thank you um what we're going to do is um let's just in the room think about what was just said so we had about 5 people share or 6 people share their stories um how much of it was iq related and how much of it was not iq related but was more personal or emotional connect related stuff how many of you think that the qualities that were highlighted of the best teachers so far were iq related just show of hands no one thinks that the qualities that were highlighted were iq related okay Does anyone think that the qualities that your colleagues just highlighted of their teachers were emotional related or personal related? Okay, that's pretty much the entire room. There are some hands which are not going up, so I'm just curious to understand what does everybody else think. Maybe those who have not decided, if one or two of you can say, what do you, what's on your mind? If I can pick on you, if you don't mind, the lady in the pink. I know your high hand didn't go up for any. Oh, you're the faculty. Okay, <laughs> you look really young, man. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, anyone else? Good. So it's pretty clear that the overwhelming majority of the room thinks that uh, most of the strengths that make our teachers or our managers stand out are related to their emotional intelligence. and you're not alone by the way so there's been multiple researches that have been done on this subject i'm going to quote one by a gentleman called daniel goleman anyone in the room who's heard of him or who's read his work all right in case you've not read his work um his name is daniel goleman he is a psychologist and he is the father of emotional intelligence so please do look him up i'm sure you'll have the book in your library if not find it on kindle it's uh, he's got multiple works uh, but you could probably start with emotional intelligence why why it matters more than iq and he has multiple other books which have come up subsequently as well so there's working with emotional intelligence and so on so these are skills which will stand you in really good stead as you start to work so it's good that you get a head start during your b school days and start learning about the concept and start practicing it during b school as well so if you look at his research essentially what he said is that if you look at jobs across the globe of all different types what contributes to person to professional excellence 33% of the time it is iq related aspects and 66% of the time which is double the amount of importance is around eq what do you think happens when we look at leadership level jobs how do you think these graphs look any guesses 
that bang on so if you look at emotional intelligence as one gets more senior in the corporate world or in the business world it actually reaches up to 85% and i'm sure all of you can resonate with it right those of you who've seen in the academic world um the roles that your principals your chairpersons your deans play those roles touch so many more people and it is about impacting lives at that level and those of us who worked we clearly know how much impact that a ceo does relative to someone who may be a middle level manager yeah what is emotional intelligence is anyone know of the movie inside out good yeah so there are more people like me who like cartoons in this room <laughs> that's fantastic um i'm sure those of you when i see a lot of smiling faces in the room i'm sure those of you who've seen the movie know how the protagonist was dominated by her emotions right so there were times where she for one moment felt joy another moment she felt fear or sadness or disgust and i'm sure all of us can relate to it right there are times where we feel overwhelmingly moved by our emotions and there are times where we feel too many emotions at once and we are like we are feeling mixed up a little bit right that's a reality for all of us and if you go back to the psychology of it um essentially there is a way in which one can become more emotionally intelligent which is essentially someone who can recognize their own feelings and to the point that you made about being self aware to recognizing feelings of others to the point that you made about your teachers um really and i think there's a gentleman in the back also who made the exact same point about my teacher could solicit things which i have not said and create a safe space for me to share so how can you recognize feelings of others how do you motivate others so there was a point that you made about your music teacher and how he motivated you amit to go beyond music and become a hard working individual to managing emotions there was a point that you made as well about you know how do you manage emotions how do you go back to the purpose how do you go back to the why that simon sin next spoke of and how do you go back despite setbacks that the digital marketing guru had how did he still overcome those so how do you manage your emotions to motivate yourself as well as to motivate others ultimately so that you can get to a result so that's basically what emotional intelligence means let's i could have taken you through a boring model and shown you like the four quadrants of emotional intelligence and the bullet points within that but i'm not going to do that i'm going to tell you stories because hopefully at the end of the two years that you spent here at ndiim you will remember the stories and you will remember not just the concepts behind the stories but hopefully you'll have a chance to feel inspired and to really practice those skills in day to day work does anyone know who this lady is bang on has anyone heard her or met her okay a whole lot of you have heard her can anyone just volunteer to share what is her story does anyone remember it's okay there are it's a safe space so all answers are good answers yes wonderful i think you've summarized it really beautifully thank you thank you for doing that could we have a chocolate for the lady at the very end that'll be great yeah um it's wonderful that a lot of you know of deepa malik i had the good fortune of meeting her and inviting her over at microsoft for a diversity and inclusion conference in april and i just walked away feeling so inspired she is a lady who breaks every single myth every single stereotype that there is she is someone who has had multiple health issues like your colleague here mentioned um you mentioned about the health issues she had around the pregnancy time frame but actually she shared with us that right from i think age 14 onwards she'd had massive spells where her spine had issues and she could not walk or she could not move or do her daily responsibility jobs uh for many many months altogether um the year 
that India was fighting Pakistan in Kargil. Her husband Vikram, who was in the Indian Army, was posted in Kargil. He was fighting a battle with the Pakistanis. And Deepa Malik was here in Delhi, fighting her own internal battles. At that point in time, she had two daughters, one three-year-old and one eight-year-old daughter. She had massive spells of illness and one day she discovered that her spells of illness were actually a tumor in her spine and she was told that she had to make the hard choice of living on a wheelchair for the rest of her life or dying within the next three months. Her husband's in Kargil. She has no support here. She has two really young children and she has this big blow delivered to her at that point in time. Anyone could have collapsed under the pressure of that adversity. But Deepa Malik is someone who showed steely self-awareness. She was one who understood that in this sort of a situation, it's very easy to go into a negative spiral and to feel sorry for oneself, to feel like, why is all of this happening to me? Oh, and by the way, one of her daughters was also disabled. She could have gone down the negative path, but she became extremely self-aware and her entire focus shifted towards just having a conversation with her husband. She was relating this story to me and she's talking about how she had a conversation with Vikram who was in Kargil and those of us who remember the Kargil war and potentially had family members fight in the Kargil war, you probably would know this. There weren't phones. You could not contact your family members very easily back then. It was a, in fact, uh, my mama fought in the Kargil war as well and I know food was also scant for the soldiers who were fighting the Pakistanis on the war front. So. With great difficulty, Deepa managed to get through to Vikram, her husband, and she just had a conversation on an uh, old uh, signaling system, and she just said, I've been told that I either need to be operated and paralyzed for the rest of my life, or I will pass away in the next three months, and I probably will never see you again. He said, for the rest of my life, if I have to, I will carry you in my arms. But I will make sure that you live the life that you want to live. Go for the surgery. And that was it. That was just all the support that she needed. And from then on, she just moved on. She stocked up her fridge. She you know, bought different gadgets, which could be opened by people who were on a wheelchair. Um, she got domestic help. She got a whole lot of ecosystem organized so that she could go in for an operation without worrying about her two little children and really come out of it smiling. It was a story which gave me goosebumps. And it was a story which still gives me goosebumps if I think about what kind of difficulty did she go through. We are fortunate. We, of course, have, each one of us have our own battles. But um, I think what really helps people tide through these difficult times is the fact that people have self-awareness and people like Deepa Malik are the ones who kind of move towards the solution rather than going down a negative spiral. I want to share another story with you on self-regulation. Does anyone know who this lady is? Well, her swimming cap has her name. Her name is Yusra Madini. Yusra is 16 and she grew up in Syria. Her dad was a sports coach and she led an amphibious life right from the word go. She used to swim all day long and she was really good at it. And then the war started. And then the bombing started. Syria was no longer safe for people to even step out of their homes. Yusra wanted to move out of Syria because clearly people were dying all around her. Her parents told her that you can leave only if you find someone reliable to take you outside of Syria. She found some family members and some cousins who basically were all fleeing to Greece from Syria. And she decided to go with them and with her younger sister. They fled in the dark of the night just so that they wouldn't be captured. 
they were in the aegean on route to greece in the middle of the night pitch dark their boat capsized there were a whole lot of syrian refugees on that a lot of them women a lot of them children a lot of them without any hopes or without any family members to support them in the cold dark night when she was in the water she thought to herself will i die like this it's so funny i spent all my life swimming and am i destined to die in the water of the agency just like this and then something clicked within her she decided i've i've swam all my life i can actually swim this whole boat to safety so she and her younger sister they tied ropes to their bodies they overturned the capsized boat they got whoever were the survivors in the water to go back on the boat they swam that entire boat in the dark of the aegean sea night to safety to greece and that's not it imagine at your deepest darkest coldest time she and her sister had the might to manage their emotions to move towards a positive outcome not knowing whether greece is this way or that way and literally swim everybody towards the shore she reached greece and from there she moved to germany um and in germany luckily for her she found someone who coached her for her swimming who recognized her swimming talents and coached her even more she was preparing for the 2020 tokyo olympics and then she was told in 2015 that actually there's a team of refugees that is being put together by the olympic committee would she be willing to participate that basically cut her time short from a few years to just a few months of preparation and she went in she said i'm all for it she went into the refugee team which by the way had nine other people in addition to her competing under the olympic flags which is why on her swim hat you see the olympic signs and you don't see a flag and she competed she didn't win the finals but she went on to be, you know be an inspiration for so many people including all of you in this room right that's all about self regulation if you think that her life if she thought at that point in time that her life was cut out for her where she was in the middle of the agent see her boat had capsized so many people crying drowning around her if she would have thought this is it that would actually have been it for her but she actually moved on from there she managed her own emotions and she led to a positive outcome watch out for her in the tokyo olympics i can guarantee to you that she'll do something spectacular does anyone know who these gentlemen are on the page satya nadella a lot of us don't know the story of the gentleman who's standing right next to satya nadella and i can tell you it's a story which is equally spectacular i'm just going to roll a video so that you can see the story rather than me telling you about it I'm Sakib Sheikh. I lost my sight when I was seven, and shortly after that, I went to a school for the blind, and that's where I was introduced to talking computers, and that really opened up a whole new world of opportunities. I joined Microsoft ten years ago as a software engineer. I love making things which improve people's lives, and one of the things I've always dreamt of since I was at university was this idea of something that could. tell you at any moment what's going on around you. I think it's a man jumping in the air doing a trick on a skateboard. I teamed up with like-minded engineers to make an app which lets you know who and what is around you. It's based on top of the Microsoft Intelligence API, which makes it so much easier to make this kind of thing. The app runs on smartphones but also on the Pivot Head smart glasses. When you're talking to a bigger group, sometimes you can talk and talk and there's no response and you think is everyone listening really well or are they half asleep and you never know. I see two faces. 40-year-old man with a beard looking surprised. 20-year-old woman looking happy. 
the app can describe the general age and gender of the people around me and what their emotions are, which is incredible. One of the things that's most useful about the app is the ability to read out text. Hello, good afternoon. Here's your menu. Great, thank you. I can use the app on my phone to take a picture of the menu and it's going to guide me on how to take that correct photo. Move camera to the bottom right and away from the document. And then it'll recognize the text. Read me the headings. I see appetizers, salads, paninis, pizzas, pastas. Years ago, this was science fiction. I never thought it would be something that you could actually do. But artificial intelligence is improving at an ever faster rate. And I'm really excited to see where we can take this. As engineers, we're always standing on the shoulders of giants, building on top of what went before. And in this case, we've taken years of research from Microsoft Research to pull this off. I think it's a young girl throwing an orange frisbee in the park. For me, it's about taking that far-off dream and building it one step at a time. I think this is just the beginning. Like I said, Saqib Sheikh, who works with us at Microsoft, is somebody who has a story which is equally spectacular as Satyal. He's someone who could have given up easily when he lost his sight at age seven. He's someone who could have said that, well, maybe I can chase different goals. Why do I really need to go after working in a large organization like Microsoft? Or why do I need to go after creating a solution to help other people who are visually challenged? But he's someone who didn't sit back, who didn't accept status quo, and who had something what we call as growth mindset. And Mohit, I referred that concept to you as you were talking about your teacher, right? Let me talk to you a little bit about growth mindset. It's a concept that, um, again, will stand you in good stead, not just during your academic years, but even beyond. Um, please pick up this book called Mindset. It's by a Stanford professor called Dr. Carol Dweck. It's a wonderful book, and it just sometimes challenges your notions, so, you know, to the point that was made earlier about Simon Sinek and how you question your own self in order to move forward. Mindset is one book that will really change your world and which will get you to question your own self. If you look at thought processes, there can be two different thought processes. And this is a very simple idea which has been given by Dr. Carol Dweck. Um, you could either have a fixed mindset which says, hey, my IQ is only so much and therefore I can only accomplish this much in life. Or there could be a different approach to life which could be that, I can grow, I can develop, I may not be great at, let's say, quant today, or I may not be great at, let's say, you know, business analytics today, or I may not be great at digital marketing today, or operations, or finance, or what have you, but I can get there. Virat Kohli, everyone knows Virat Kohli? Yeah? What differentiates him, and I'm sure you've heard this in several different forums, what differentiates him is not just his talent. He is supremely talented, no doubt about it. But what differentiates him is the fact that he's willing to put in so much more hard work into his talent and to get better and better and better every day. That's exactly what growth mindset is all about. I'm not going to run you through this entire chart, but rather I'll explain this concept through a quick video. Sorry, is the video speed up? Video lagi like there's a powerful relationship between what we believe about how we learn and our actual achievement? Dr. Carol Dweck studies students' beliefs about intelligence. What she found is that students generally hold one of two very different beliefs about intelligence. Some students have what she calls a fixed mindset. This is the belief that intelligence is a fixed trait that doesn't change much. So like eye color, these students believe you're born with a certain amount of intelligence and there's not much you can do to change it. Other students have a very different belief about intelligence. They have a growth mindset. They see intelligence more like a muscle. They understand that when you put in effort, you can get smarter. What we now know from study after study is that the more students have a growth mindset, 
and believe that they can grow their intelligence, the better they do in school. Students with a growth mindset do better in school because they approach learning differently than students with a fixed mindset. For students with a fixed mindset, their goal in school is to show how smart they are or hide how dumb they think they are. This makes sense, right? If you think you're just born smart or dumb, you want to make sure you show that you are smart. So this makes fixed mindsetters much less likely to ask questions in class or seek out help from peers or teachers, because that would involve showing that they don't know something. Students with a growth mindset, on the other hand, have the goal to learn, so they're more likely to ask a question if they don't understand or to seek out help or try a new strategy if they are struggling. When it comes to the amount of effort you have to put forth, students with a fixed mindset and students with a growth mindset see that differently as well. Those with a fixed mindset actually see effort as proof of low ability. They think that if you have to try hard, that means you aren't very smart. Whereas students with a growth mindset see effort as the way that you get smarter. How students react when they are faced with a challenge or setback in their learning is what really differentiates those with a fixed mindset and those with a growth mindset. Students with a fixed mindset will think that they are not smart and will likely give up on a task. Those with a growth mindset tend to work harder because they see it as an opportunity to learn and grow their intelligence. So if we can all grow our intelligence, are we saying that all students have equal ability? We aren't saying that everyone has the same level of intelligence. Having a growth mindset doesn't mean that you believe everyone has equal ability in every subject matter. It also doesn't mean that we believe some students aren't more talented in certain subjects than others. It means that you believe that no matter where a person is now, they can always improve with effort, good strategies, and help. And that's the number one piece of information you should take away from this lesson. No matter where a person is now, they can always improve with effort, good strategies, and help. This goes back to what Mohit was saying. It's exactly what Mohit said. It's every student has a potential to improve. And if the teacher actually spends time understanding the students, soliciting questions, which are probably unsaid, and creating that safe space for the student to really feel like they want to learn even more, things can go from there. And I think this is a really valuable lesson, which I hope all of you will benefit from. Everyone watches Suits? Wonderful. So do you know who this gentleman is? Can you just maybe, if you don't mind, share about Louis Litt and how he is as a person? Wonderful. I think you just nailed it. Louis Litt is somebody who thinks he's the best and he clearly compares himself with Harvey Specter in the, in the, in the series uh, Suits in case you guys haven't seen it. But does everybody else think that he is the best? No, right? Everyone else thinks he's really obnoxious, right? And his lack of social awareness and his lack of understanding that, hey, I may think that I'm cat's whiskers, but does everybody else agree with me or not, is what costed him the partner position, in case you follow the series. But the good news is that social awareness, like every skill, is something which can be developed. So those of us who've seen the latest episodes of Suits, they would know that over time, he came around. Over time, he understood that he's actually obnoxious, not really the best. And he actually made bridges, built bridges with Harvey Specter and with other people in the, um, in the serial. And he eventually ended up being seen as at least a trusted person in the organization. So key lesson here is to be socially aware of how others are perceiving you. And at the same time, you can develop on social awareness as well. Right. The final one, relationship management. You could look at the example of Microsoft and Apple. Traditional rivals, there was a time where 
Microsoft was gunning after Apple and the idea was to have Windows platform on all mobile devices and uh, iOS obviously was eating into that market share and obviously Microsoft did not like it. But if you look at the story today with the change in leadership with Satya Nadella and with Tim Cook coming into the helm of these two technology giants, you actually see something new happening. So you see Satya Nadella actually going to tech conferences in the west coast of the United States and demoing Windows products on iOS platform. And you see Tim Cook talking extremely positively about the Windows applications which are available on the iOS platform. That's relationship management for you. Traditional rivals who actually turned into partners just because they had a larger business interest in mind, they knew that the market opportunity is massive and unless they come together, they will probably not be able to succeed in the SUKA world. With that, I'm just going to switch gears a little bit. I think emotional intelligence is not a concept for all of us to just understand. It's actually a skill for all of us to practice during the course of our lifetime. I know we have about 10 minutes remaining. Is that right? Do we have 10 minutes? We have about 10 minutes. What we can do is we can go through quick scenarios. So think of these as real situations that you would face and think about how you would respond. Let's look at this one. I'll give you a moment to read through this. Does this happen? Have you heard other people make fun of someone else's accent just because they are from a different part of the country? Right? How do you react? Just raise your hands. Maybe we'll take two responses to this one. How would you react if you were the onboarding buddy? What will you do if Rahul comes back and says, I didn't mean that. Why are you giving me all of this gyan when I actually was just poking fun at, at Ashok, just like I would poke fun at anyone else in the team? That's, that's one way of dealing with it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Any other thoughts? There are obviously multiple ways of dealing with the same situation. Yes, right here. What if he says, I don't want to become friends with Ashok. Ashok is just a trainee. He's here for two months. I'm here to show him I'm the boss, which is why I was poking fun at him. How will you react to that? Sure. So I know we can probably go on on this one. I'm really sorry we have to, i given the time. We have multiple situations. And like I said, you know, you feel free to address the next one as well. There are multiple ways of dealing with this situation. Um, one way could also be that while you 
classify Ashok one on one separately, but you also go back to Rahul and given remember that he is a senior and potentially he has a crazy sense of humor. You don't know. Potentially have a one on one conversation with him, saying that I may be wrong, but the vibe I got was that when you brought up the point of ethnicity and accent, Ashok probably did not. react to it very positively so i may be wrong and i'm sure your intentions are to make him feel welcome but potentially it may be good if that situation can be addressed one on one between you and ashok and then leave the ball in rahul's court it could be that rahul is coming at it with a positive lens like we said right it could be that he has a crazy sense of humor and he uses the exact same way of interacting with everybody but if you are becoming the rescuer or if you're getting into the middle chances are that you know the onus is shifting on to you rather than mending the relationship between those two individuals directly so that could be another way of course there's no right or wrong answer it's completely contextual on the personalities that you're working with all right this is how not to do it right all right so let's talk about self regulation i'll give you a moment to read through this and i promise you'll be the first person i'll come to <laughs> no pressure any responses to that Okay so what was what did you say specifically so you told them basically that you are not communicating yeah. and probably you need to communicate with one another so you were direct in your approach in in that sense okay good any other approaches yes that's a really good approach because it is non threatening and it starts from an area of interest for the individual and it goes on to appreciate the impact that they have made so that's that's a really good approach one final one and then we'll move to the next one yes yes you can share Ma'am, if I find that the other members are not working, then I will motivate them by saying, and by saying that if they have worked worked very hard in the past, then I will um, uh, motivate them by saying, uh, uh, discussing regarding those activities so that they can work hard in the future projects. Like the way uh, if uh, Virat Kohli has done uh, has motivated Shikhar Dhawan. by saying that you have performed well in the champions trophy during the year 2013 so uh, so recapitulating the past activities in a positive in a positive manner will help the team members to work hard in the future that's fantastic i think 
really very good in terms of approach one thing which i see all of you missing is the element about the manager please remember you still have to deliver to the customer in a month's time and you're probably way behind on your deliverables so you've got to think about how do you make sure thank you thank you for sharing you've got to make sure that you how do you how do you advise your manager how do you share the situation with her or with him so that it one doesn't throw your team members under the bus and two doesn't take your manager by surprise when he or she learns that things are not going as per plan and how can you co-opt with her to make sure that your team progresses and makes up for lost time so that's another element to think about right in the interest of time i'll just move to the next one this is how not to respond by the way it's a good idea to keep your manager informed beforehand rather than going and crying in a team meeting about how your project is progressing yeah i'll give you a moment to think about this and then we'll hear back in terms of responses Okay, this time I'd like to hear from the back. How would you approach a situation like this? Any volunteers? Okay if there are no, no volunteers i'm going to do exactly what is written on this slide i'm going to volunteer someone perhaps um the gentleman in the second last row white shirt glasses yes that's you yes thank you for volunteering <laughs> how would you approach sure so your point is either direct them to the official protocol and say that hey you are supposed to work and you're not working or either to escalate um, report them to the manager or so on and so forth i think one thing which i definitely want to call out is emotional intelligence is not about being nice so it's not about being nice to someone who's not doing their job it's about respecting people for sure it's about empathizing with them it's about stepping into their sh- shoes and knowing how they would feel but at the same time if someone's not performing probably it would be appropriate to look at co-opting people at the right time but having said that go for a phased approach right um so thank you thank you for sharing anybody else in the back who would like to volunteer or i will volunteer people otherwise the gentleman in the hat at the very back please call hat Hello. Hello. So your response would be to make sure that the manager is in loop so that whatever other lapses are actually called out. So would that be likely to alienate your team members even further? Will they feel even more unfriendly towards you? 
and is that a outcome that you can live with can't live with is a question which is contextual right so if you yeah that's a really good approach as well so the idea is thank you thank you for sharing the idea is to make sure that you are building a personal connection with people and i think similar to what was shared in the past example as well idea is to understand where are people coming from what's their motivation and then going along with the seniors to decide on the path of action and then making sure that we connect on a personal basis to update people so you know clearly these are all good strategies in the workplace it's never a straight line so one has to look at maneuvering one's approach based on the situation or based on the people that you're working with all right this is how not to do it anyone from um, the iit is in the room okay my apologies in case anyone is from the iit is in the room of course they are really awesome institutions and i'm pretty sure everyone has the iq to do every project independently but that's not the idea all right um final one and this is an easy one have you had situations like this where you have a colleague who will never take no for an answer yeah how would you approach it okay yes, so no one's going to volunteer themselves i'm going to ask few people to volunteer their opinion um the second last row the the second lady in the second last row yeah this right here yes how would you approach it that's fine keep thinking that's fine anyone else would like to volunteer how they would approach it Yes, over there. What if you are so packed that you actually don't have time to take on anything extra? what does she say is this is super urgent and this has been given to me by our direct boss how will you react so that's one way and that's pretty much like ashok from iit doing the entire project on his own shoulders <laughs> that is certainly one way that one can react any other approaches yes that is such a smart response i wouldn't have thought of that thank you so much <laughs> you actually <laughs> very smart response 
how probably one of the ways to handle this is to really um one is to just take a step back if you know that someone is a troublemaker and who has come to you with work and potentially will not take no for an answer probably the person is coming in with a genuine need right so the point is allay their concern by making them feel heard so share you know maybe just let her talk for some time talk about what she wants done and then after that if you have zero bandwidth and if you're not willing to do what ashok from iit did um that is basically work himself crazy doing someone else's job um maybe one way to deal with the situation is to think about hey there are other colleagues in the team as well and let's see if we can talk to a third person and who can help you in addition to of course you do my job i do your job that's you know and then you can that can work as well that can work as well what is not the right approach here is this one though I'm sure all of us have come across people who are really hard-nosed and who are extremely prone to escalating things and not taking no for an answer. So clearly not the way to deal with situations um, the way that Alice has dealt with this one in Dilbert. All right. So with that, I'm going to quickly end. Um, I hope the time that we spent this morning really helped all of us understand more about competencies that will stand you in good stead in the future. Uh, and like one of us said that every problem in the world has a solution and a lot of problems that you will deal with in the workplace will be people related problems so the smarter you get about emotional intelligence the better it will be for you in the workplace and it will be much easier for you to succeed and to navigate right any questions before we close yes that's a brilliant question um so dr carol dweck in her book says that everyone is on a spectrum right so it's not as if one is 100% on a fixed mindset or one is 100% on a growth mindset there could be aspects that you are on a growth mindset about so say for example if you think that you're on a fixed mindset about let's say your ability in math potentially you may be on a growth mindset on let's say your ability in swimming that could be the case so the idea is to just a constantly remind yourself that the psychology of the brain is such that your brain forms new connections and new synapses or you know basically that's a uh, neural connection uh, as you keep practicing so the more you practice the better you get and the other element is as you saw in the video is to look at the right strategy so look at people who are doing well at a certain area that you want to succeed in so say for example if you're not so good at let's say negotiating with people so you know observe someone who may be wonderful at that and clearly they were not born like that understand from them how did they get so good at negotiating with people and then learn those strategies from them So I've had the good fortune of having many many great leaders that I've worked with in fact um I think the last couple of role models that I've had have been people I've had the good fortune of working with I mean um definitely one would be Jeff Melt Jeff Melt who was until recently the chairman and the CEO of General Electric um he's someone who is a perfect balance of strategic thinking and execution as well you know how it is right there are some people who are able to think very high level but maybe not able to action it but he's someone who's able to saddle both ends of the spectrum the other element which is super impressive about him is um, his people orientation his ability to connect with customers his ability to connect with employees his ability to get to the heart of the matter like what your colleagues were saying that can a teacher figure out what's going on in the head of somebody else without them actually speaking about it is phenomenal so you know i find him i find him really 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 impressive 
um the other ones i would say have been uh, you know people who have impacted me in my daily life so my mom's definitely my biggest inspiration she's someone who had a lot of adversity at a very young age and uh, she's had multiple rounds of adversity ever since but she's kind of tidied over each one of them so um i think those are the two ones that i would highlight yes that's a very real scenario and i'm so glad that you brought it up because you know a lot of people are not brave enough to talk about it <laughs> hmm so at least the mantra that i use is to keep telling yourself that this is not me especially if you know that you have a particular strength that you're not able to showcase in a particular job because of the people or because of the opportunity that is given to you or the role or whatever have you keep telling yourself that you are this is not you you can get better when someone gives you a difficult time or if they're giving you difficult feedback which doesn't necessarily relate to you of course the first step is to kind of think about it from a distance and say that are they right are they somewhat right or not um but if you feel that there are elements which resonate with you and you need to kind of take forward then definitely take that advice for the rest i think just turn a blind ear to that and move on because as you work and the higher you go and i'm sorry to say this but especially if you're a woman leader you will get more and more criticism i'm sure you know all the senior women professors sitting in the room will agree it is the way that society is it is the way that uh, it will be unfortunately so you have to know which areas would feedback to take seriously and what areas not to take seriously and then you know just use that uh, ignore that and use the constructive feedback as stepping stones to move forward that could be so ideally like i said when you look at feedback it will open up so look at it from an angle of what is what is the challenge that's being presented to you and what's the solution that you're looking at and then of course look at multiple different solutions which could include changing your role changing your department changing your boss or you know changing the kind of thoughts that you have in your own head as well i think it goes back to what was said in the beginning simon sinek if you've not seen the um the talks on social media please do look him up he talks about exactly what you said right the why and the purpose right so it's ultimately about defining who you are as an individual and what you want to achieve in life and then go from there yeah okay any yes so definitely daniel goleman is something which uh, you should read carol dweck is another one that you should definitely read i actually follow elon musk quite a bit um he's not really an author but he writes um he tweets and a lot of people write about him so he's another um, really good thinker and he's someone who's a disruptor in the true sense of the word so that's the other one um yeah i think other than that frankly i kind of rely on hbr they have an app called ascend so all of us have mobile phones which have you know uh, which where you can download the hbr ascend app those are like very in short in the moment stories that you can pick up and relate to and learn from so yeah absolutely i think i'm glad you brought that point up and emotional intelligence isn't about being nice all the time and becoming a show who's doing everybody else's job um and becoming a victim so to speak emotional intelligence is about figuring out what are your boundaries right and when is the other person overstepping and then in the right way pushing back the right things yeah
Yes. So I can answer that question in two parts. One is if you look at research, if you look at what Daniel Goldman says in his books about women versus men, and this is an oft debated question, right? um he says that the areas of competence are different for both women and men and you know women sometimes can bring natural strength to areas like empathy um and whereas men can have completely different uh, natural strengths as well but if you look at his longitudinal study that he's done over many many years he's basically found not too much of a difference in terms of emotional intelligence at an overall level versus gen- by gender um in terms of my personal experience I actually found emotional intelligence to be gender agnostic. <laughs> a lot of times it's about, you know, the values that people come from. Um it's about um you know, are they brought up a certain way um to really respect the other individual irrespective of whether they're a janitor or whether they are a CEO of an organization. And very often I found that those values are agnostic to gender. It just is, you know, part of who the individual is. All right, one final question. I know you guys have been up since really early in the morning. One final question and then we'll let you go. All right, if not then all the best and I really really wish you all the luck. You are at a very good point in your life and you know you basically are the writers of your destiny going forward. So write well. <laughs>